Section five and class five of the marriage. We're on page three hundred and ninety. The section we're starting today is women that want is prohibited to marry. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> So the section is very uh, uh, thrilling section. It will make yourself sort of think about your relatives and how they being not mahram or mahram. So inshallah, we'll start with first of all. There's an ayat between 22, 24 in Surah An-Nisa. Now these ayat are going to be mentioned in details through the top the text. So حُرِّمَتْ عَلَيْكُمْ أُمَّهَاتُكُمْ وَبَنَاتُكُمْ وَأَخَوَاتُكُمْ وَعَمَّاتُكُمْ وَخَالَاتُكُمْ وَبَنَاتُ الْأَخِيَ وَبَنَاتُ الْأُخْتِ وَأُمَّهَاتُكُمْ To the end of the verses. Now these verses are going to be Basically stating who is mahram, meaning that you're not allowed to marry, and who is not. So let's just talk on the text. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions in this ayat from the women. Not the translation. Uh, no. um, in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the women, one is not allowed to marry. Upon further inspection, we can see that the ineligible women are two categories. Okay, I'm going to think... Uh, Yes, just, just making sure that uh, Ahmed has got access to her. Fadl, yes, go ahead. The first is perpetually ineligible. This is such a forbidden for a man to marry during all times. And the second is temporarily ineligible. Such a forbidden for a man to marry as long as she is in her, pres in her present particular state. If the, prohibit the prohibition ceases, and she becomes the wife of the man. Right. So the categories of prohibition is two. One, perpetual. That means the woman, she's not allowed to marry this man in any sort of circumstances. And the second one, which is temporarily. And this will make the woman not allowed to marry to the person in certain circumstances or certain situation, when the situation or circumstances change, it will be maybe possible for her to marry that man. Um, so now we're going to be talking them in, into details. First one, which is the category, the perpetual a prohibition. And the causes of this are blood relations, marriage ties, and breastfeeding ties. So the perpetual or the haram is three categories. One is to do with the blood relationship. Father, something like this, uncle. And the other one is through the marriage. The wife of the son, the wife of the father. And the third one is the breastfeeding. So those are the three things that would cause a perpetual prohibition for the woman to marry a certain man. Let's talk to them about them in details. And by the way, we're going to write a lot. If you want to write, write a lot, because he's here, it's just very short. He's made it like a concise. The first is those perpetually forbidden due to marriage, due to blood relations, are the mothers, daughters, sisters, paternal aunts, maternal aunts, nieces by one's brother, and nieces by one's sister. Okay, we need to make sure that we understand each category in its own. Okay, the mothers. Is a mother here is the name of every female whom she is related or linked to a birth onto you. So it is the mother and the mother of the mother and upwards. Also the mother of the father and upwards. Again, the mothers here it means every female that she has somehow is in the lineage of giving birth to you. So it is the mother and the mother of the mother, which is grandmother, upwards, and also the paternal grandmother, which is the mother of the father, and upwards. These are called the mothers you're not allowed to marry. Second one, he said, the daughters. 
The daughter is uh, the name of every female whom you are in the lineage of her birth. So you are connected to give birth to her somehow. So this includes the daughter and the daughter of the son and downwards, daughter of the son of the son, and daughter of the, as well, daughter and downwards. So we've got now the daughter, the daughter of the son and downwards, and also the daughter of the daughter and downwards. So you are the grandfather, whether it's from the uh, grandfather from the son's side or from the daughter's side. Up to here, okay, everything's all right. Yeah, so we're going to go to the third one, which is the sisters. Sisters, which is every female that has some links with your two origin, which is the father and the mother. So they are the sister from the father, the sister from the mother, and the sister from both. So full sister, maternal sister, paternal sister. Whether she is sister for you from father and mother, or half a sister from the father, which is paternal sister, or half a sister from the mother, which is called maternal sister. Then it comes to the ammat, the aunties. The aunties on the women or every female whom she had shared your father or his grandfather, which is the origin, uh, or the mother and the grandmother in its origin, they shared. So, for example, we find that the auntie is here, the one from the father's side is the sister of the father and the sister of the father of the father, and upwards. Sister of the father, it's your auntie. Sister of the father of the father, which is the auntie of your father, and upwards. And also from your mother's side, how? The sister of the father of your mother. The sister of your aunt, the father of your mother. That's called as well, amma, from the side of the mother. Okay, so that's called ammat, and upwards. So the sister of the father, of the father, of the mother, and so on. Then we come into the khala. Khala means the maternal grandma, the uh, maternal auntie. Maternal auntie is the one who is sharing your mother or her origin in the two sides or one side, meaning she is the sister of your mother, that's your auntie, the sister of the mother of your mother, and upwards, and also which is the auntie of your mother, can anybody give me the third one now? According to what I said? Yeah. Looks like you're not following. Sister, don't tell me grandmother. Tell me father of something like this. I want to understand which, which grandmother are you talking about. That's why we said that. We said the sister of the mother, sister of the mother and the mother upwards. But there's another one as well. Okay. Let me just, because you're not paying attention. So when we said the aunties from that, and that is from the father's side paternal aunts. We said they are the sister of your father, sister of the father of the father, and upwards. Do you have a problem with that? And also the sister of the father of your mother and upwards. So the sister of the father of your mother, sister of the father of the father of your mother, and upwards. Now we come into the maternal aunt. Sister of your mother, sister of the mother and the mother and upwards, and Sister of the father of your mother. Sister of the father of your mother, we said still from the mother. Sister of the father of your mother is your auntie from the paternal. It's called paternal. Because it's father. Sister of the father becomes paternal. It has to be a maternal. A sister of a mother. The sister of the mother of your mother's mother. Well, that's up with the same thing. But we want something else. Scratch your brains. We said the maternal aunt, paternal aunt. Paternal aunt, the sister of your father. Do you have a problem with that? Your auntie? Paternal aunt, yeah? Sister of the father of the father, which is the auntie of your father. And upwards, sister of the father of the father of the father. Okay? You have a problem with that? Okay. And also you have a paternal aunt from the mother's side, which is the sister of the father of your mother. Ah, uh, that's what the auntie. Now you're going. Now you're. <laughs> so you click now. So when we come now to, to the maternal auntie, sister of your mother, sister of the mother of the mother, and upwards, and sister of the mother of your father. Do you understand that? Sister of the mother of your father. That's it. And upwards, sister of the mother of the mother of your father. As long as the sister of the mother is called maternal aunt. Okay, you're going to scratch. You're going to scratch a lot today. <laughs> 
طيب so this is as well مط حلال في تمري then that he says بنات الأخ the nieces which is the daughters of the brother the daughters of the brother is every female whom your brother has a birth onto her he's linked to her birth so this is the remember this is the daughter of your brother so this is every female whom your brother has a birth onto her so we have the following which is the daughter of your brother any brother whether it is full half that means paternal brother or maternal brother you understand paternal brother maternal brother paternal brother that means his brother from your father's side maternal brother is mother from your mother's side so that once so this the daughter of your brother regardless of any brother then after that the daughter of the son of the brother and downwards so your brother's got a son and his daughter and that is daughter the son of the son of the son of the brother doesn't matter because is your brother has somehow a birth onto her okay you follow me doctor son so the sister of the daughter of the brother or the sister so the, sorry yeah the daughter of the daughter of the brother and downwards and daughter of the son of the brothers and downwards daughter of the daughter of the brother so your brother's got a daughter and his daughters all of them are your nieces okay so all of them are your nieces going down five so also from the sisters daughter of the sister which is still your niece from the from the from the daughter side from the sister side and any sister whether it's a full sister paternal sister maternal sister any daughter of theirs they are your nieces and also the daughter of the son of any sister and downwards and the daughter of the daughter of any sister and downwards all of those as well they are to be uh, your maharam i think if you put some symbols and arrows it makes it very easy and that's how we memorize these things symbols and arrows because that will come inshallah into the inheritance so if for example i give you the symbols of the following then you write it down mother is m then we'll just see who is the father so we call the mother so the mother is m that's your mother okay m is the mother right that down down father is f so it's f father okay and son is s s and the sister is we put fs full sister ps paternal sister ms mts maternal sister so um, i don't have a board here so m and small t maternal sister so you got full sister paternal sister maternal sister and then you got the daughter d daughter so now you got okay now so when we say grandma from the mother side we say m small o and then m so it becomes like this m o m and then the arrows which is upwards it means m o m o m mother of the mother of the mother of, do you understand that so it's m o m and upwards this is like maths that math so it's m o m so the father of the father and up was f small o and f and up was f o f o f right now so if we're going to go to the mothers we said who's who's the mahram to you m and m o m and upwards and m o f and upwards mother of the father so m o f mother of the father and upwards this is called the mothers can give me please now the daughters please yeah zubair the um, daughters give me the symbols daughters it says banan daughters what are they what are they mahram daughters d so the d so d daughter m d o which is small the son of the d o s daughter of the son remember and I'm talking about who are the mahram we said the daughters daughters means daughter daughter of the son and downwards no, no no i'm talking about the daughters now not daughter of the brothers you the category category see first category says what the mothers second category says what the daughters third category don't don't jump to the categories okay one by one so you said again 
So we're talking about the daughters now. So the mothers, we said, who are the mothers? M, M-O-M, and M-O-F, and upwards. Does that all understand it? Yes, Zubair? Right. And the daughters, D, daughter, D-O-S, daughter of the son, and downwards, daughter of the son, of the son, of the son. And also, daughter of the daughter, D-O-D, and downwards. That's how we see the daughters. Now the sister is a bit sort of uh, very easy. Full sister, Khawat, FS, paternal sister, PS, and maternal sister, MTS. These are the sisters. Coming down to the Ammat, which is the maternal, or so the paternal aunties. Paternal aunties is as follows. Uh, any sister, so you can put just any sister, just put any sister, AS, son of the father. So this is any sister, son of the father. Any sister, the son of the father, the father. But they are the they, they are the sisters of your father, and upwards. And also the sister of the father, you know, the, the mother, and upwards. Aunties, which are from the mother's side, they are the sister of your mother. What do you call it in Pakistani, Mamu? Sister of the auntie, she, she, Mamu. She's huh? What is that? Khala. What is Khala? Khala. 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 Same thing. Arabic Khala. Khala, sister of the mother, and sister of the mother of the mother, and sister of the mother of the father, as well as called Khala. We said now that the, we've got, alhamdulillah, the nieces from the sons and from the daughters. Now we come into the second prohibition, which is from the marriage, and we have to pay attention. Yeah. The first is the mother in law. Mother in law, and I like that word, the mother of the wife. This in law and in law. Is going to confuse us. So the mother of the what? Mother of the wife. Mother of the wife. It's not necessary that the marriage is consummated. The mother of the wife becomes perpetually forbidden due to the conclusion of the nikah itself. So they made the nikah, just the nikah, this papers, no consummation, no intercourse. Straight away, the mother of the wife of yours becomes what? Becomes what? Perpetually mahram, prohibited. Do you understand what I'm talking about, Ikhwani? Are you following up? Yeah. The mother of your wife becomes fully mahram. This is to show how, how much you are in, in relationship. Fine. And upwards. So, the mother of the mother of your wife, the mother of the mother of your wife, upwards, all of that is mahram. Do you understand that? Can anybody else as well add to this? We said the mother of the wife and the mother of the mother of the wife and upwards. Can anybody add something to this? Well done. The mother of the father of the wife. Also, she's not on that side. Do you understand me? So the father of your wife, his mother, she's a mahram. You are a mahram to her. And upwards, the mother of the father of the father of the wife. So, in regardless how far they go up. It's the father of the mother, even if he had a different wife, another wife. So, we, we, we get it. These are questions later on. <laughs> Take it easy. <laughs> we will talk about so, so, now we said, first of all, the mother of your wife, you call it mother in law. The mother of the mother and upwards, and the mother of the father of the wife and upwards, all of them what? Mahram. Got it. Alhamdulillah. Second one. So we said straight away, as soon as the marriage takes place with contract, regardless of consummation, she becomes mahram. You're not allowed to marry her forever, the mother of your wife or her mother's Naam. The stepdaughter is from a wife. And I like that stepdaughter as well. I like the daughter of the wife. Do you understand me? The daughter of the wife, which is from not yourself, the daughter of the wife. Now, with whom one has consummated a marriage, the marriage contract is concluded, but the man does not consummate the marriage. Then, if there's a divorce or the woman dies, the daughter of the wife is still eligible for the man. Allah has stated in the above quoted verse, but there's no sin on you if you have not gone in a man. Right, well, the ayah, it says, وَرَبَا إِبُكُمْ أَلَّا إِفِي حُجُورِكُمْ مِنْ نِسَائِكُمْ أَلَّا تِدَخَلْتُمْ بِهِمْ The whole ayah. Rabiba is the word in Arabic, is a woman who is like a step daughter. She's the daughter of your wife. 
What it says in the ayah, the one who are in your house. That means you are the one who is responsible for her. You are her wali. Um, okay. And, and then he said, Allah the one who we have intercourse with. So that means if you can't if you have made a marriage contract with a woman and she has a daughter from somebody else, and you did not consummate the marriage, you did not intercourse, and if you divorce this woman, you're allowed to marry what? The daughter. Is that understood? Okay, you're allowed to marry that daughter. But if you have consummated the marriage, you have intercourse with the wife, then her daughter from another husband, she becomes a rabiba. Scholars had differed now regarding the issue of this, which is or the ones who are with you. Okay. Um, is it, that means it's a condition. So if she is, let's say that you consummated the marriage with this woman, but her daughter does not live with you. She lives with her father. She doesn't live with you at the house. She does not live with her mother. Is that going to make it halal for you to marry her if you divorce this woman? You are into cause, remember. That's the ikhtilaf between the scholars. And the correct opinion, Yahwani, is actually, is that the wordings here, Allahi, fi hujurikum, is does not have a meaning. It is usually is the case that this woman she will be having a daughter with her, usually. So it is not a condition. The condition is that once you've consummated the marriage with the woman, her daughter becomes a mahram, whether she lives with you in the house or lives somebody somewhere else. And this is the saying of most of the scholars. But we do have some scholars who say otherwise, like the Ibn Hazm al-Lahiri and others. So we do have other people who say other scholars, but we say the correct opinion, and this is the opinion of the majority of the scholars, and supported as well by the late scholars like Sheikh Ibn Rathami, Sheikh Al Albani as well. Rahimallah al -jamil. So we say, the daughter of the wife, once you consummated the marriage, made into cause with the wife, she becomes a perpetually mahram, not allowed to marry her. Now, if he did not consummate the marriage, he did not, he just made the contract and divorce, you're allowed to marry the daughter of hers. Okay, all right, is that understood? Alhamdulillah. Tay. Now, you have now to understand that a Rabiba, okay, let's say that you have a Rabib, a boy, all right, a boy, which is the, the son of your wife. I'm asking this Rabib, if he marries a woman. That wife of his, does she become perpetually mahram unto you? Let's say that this son of your wife from another wife, another husband, he got married. And then he divorced that woman. Are you allowed to marry that woman? Do you understand what I'm saying, Ikhwan, or not? Are you following up? I, I, I... So according to what we have learned up to now, is she a mahram? The wife of the son of your wife? Yes. He comes a mahram. Where is where is the proof? Huh? Yeah. Can you just we sit down like a student of knowledge? The old people, no problem. I just see you young. Not sit down like this. Don't sit down like a cafeteria and shisha. Sit down, see the knowledge. Yalla. Not really. This is affect the, the knowledge. People sitting down the club. Yeah, not really. Not really bothered about the class. But the one who sit, sits really get closer, Juan. Get closer. This is where we teach the people. Get fill up the gaps, Ikhwani. No, not you. I'm talking about the ones at the back. You have to really just to sit as like people. That's what the effect, inshallah, the class. But there is no proof. She he's allowed to marry her. So it's only the daughter. So now when we say the daughter or the son, even downwards. So the daughter of the daughter of your wife. She's still mahram to you. The daughter of the son of your wife, still mahram to you, and downwards, but not the wife of his. Or let's say the wife of the son of the daughter of your wife. Your daughter of your wife, she she had a son, she married, and her son married to another wife. And she divorces her, you're allowed to marry her. Okay? So remember that it is only the Rabiba and her lineage from the daughters and sons, but not the wife and spouses. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right, here inshallah. 
now we understand alhamdulillah wa rabaibukum allati fi hujurikum min nisaikum allati dakhaltum bihin طيب fourth one the, the third, third one. one is the is the uh, wife of the son. <laughs> yes. What did she say there? Okay. What did she say? <laughs> <laughs> See that this law confuses you. Yeah, in Arabic translation. Yeah, the wife of the, the son. Wife of the son. Good. And she becomes perpetually forbidden at the conclusion of the marriage contract. And the fourth one. Okay. No, no, no. Third one. So the wife of the son. Your son had married a wife. This wife becomes perpetually mahram upon you. Fine. Now I'm asking. The wife, mother, is she perpetual prohibited upon the father? The son, he married a wife. Okay. We said... Is it haram for him, this son, to marry the mother of his wife? Haram or haram? haram? Haram. I'm talking about his father now. <laughs> the father of the son. The wife of his son is mahram. But what about the mother, the mother of the wife of his son? It's not a mahram. That's why I'm going to give you, inshallah, maybe on a quiz, which is a very big quiz, to tell the son, how does it work? Subhanallah. If, you, if this happens, then you'll have a Amazing relationship, which you want to see, inshallah, in a minute. I'm going to give it to you before we start the prayer. And that is a person, he was with 13 women. 13, a man, he was with 13 women. And he's saying, I got all of them, I'm allowed to sit with them. He said, three are my daughters. And three, they are my paternal aunties and three they are my maternal aunties and so he's got three daughters three paternal aunties three maternal aunties and i'm going to just as well to add to it as well and three my sisters four multiplied by three is how much 12 yeah. and my wife this is the question is the mother of all <laughs> <laughs> you know what I said? I am with three my daughters, three my sisters, three my paternal aunties, three my maternal aunties, and I've got my wife, she's the mother of all of those. It will be possible, inshallah, after the prayer. <laughs> yeah, let's okay, inshallah. It's eight o'clock, isn't it? الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومولاه وعلى من تبعه دا إلى يوم يلقى. I did give a clue before I have made the prayer and I will solve within a minute after we finish those women who are محرم to you perpetually. So we said the last one which is fourth one please the wife of the father. Do we do that? We have it. The wife of the father. The wife of the father. Please read. Um, she becomes forbidden for the man as soon as the nikah is concluded. So the nikah, meaning the contract. So even if the marriage was not consummated, your father had married a woman just by a contract. He divorced her. She's still mahram upon the son perpetually. He's not allowed to marry her, just like also the wife of the son. If the son just made a contract without consummation, divorces her, she's still perpetually mahram upon that son of his. And also we said the mother of the wife. So the mother of the wife, we said, mother of the wife, and also the wife of the father onto the son, the mother of the wife onto the husband, it's not allowed, with the, just the contract. This is only what the daughter of your wife for her to be a mahram, the consummation has to take place. Contract is not enough. Fine. So we say here, the wife of the father and the wife of the father of the father, the wife of the father of the mother and upwards. I gave a clue here. 
just to make sure that you understand who is mahram or not mahram, said there was a man, I would like to have a, maybe a microphone, which is a tafi, carry it, you have a, come on, I heard that song. Put that on, put that on, please. Yeah, I know what to do. Right. I have, <clears throat> it was five. Yeah. yeah. Takes about maybe five minutes. No, you can just. It's on, it's on. It's not on. Somebody switched it up. But Kerry Show. I think there's an on and off button, maybe on it. Okay, I'll carry this with me now. Sorry, Benny. Before you volume up, that's why. Everybody awake now? Put it down, down, down. Bismillah. No, no, no. Number two. That's it. That's it. Salah. Just wait. I've, I've moved the camera, so yeah, we can see Jeff now. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Can I just ask for this? Uh, you have a board, Wi-Fi. Um, just a tissue, please. Tissue. Yeah. Yeah. Like a lot. Right. I'm just gonna. I said that there was a person who had 13 women with him, and basically he said that I've got all of them there. I'm allowed to sit with him. Three of them is my daughters, three of them are my sisters, three of them are my maternal aunties, three of them are uh -huh. my paternal aunties, and my wife, and my wife, she is the mother of all. And that, he said, cannot biologically uh, happen. But you now understand how does it happen. So I'm going to just put a name here. Sorry to interrupt, but we can't see. I'm going to put a name here. They say this is a, the man. And his name is Muhammad. Right. So this is Muhammad. And his wife, she's here. I'm going to call her Aisha. Okay? Aisha. So God, these two are married. Husband and wife. Yes? This woman, Aisha, she had before, from another doctor, husband, we can't see three daughters. Okay, three daughters. We have the one, the two, the three, which you call them the stepdaughters of Muhammad. Remember, Muhammad, if you consummate the marriage with Aisha, this becomes perpetually Muhammad. But if it is not consummate the marriage, it is just contract. You also say they're allowed to marry to D1 or D2 or to D3. Right. Now, Muhammad from Aisha, he also produced three daughters. So he's got three daughters now here. Right. So he's got D, let's call it DD1, DD2, and DD3. Right. Now, daughter one, Got married to this called marriage here, Maros, with father of Muhammad. Okay, right. The father of Muhammad, this daughter is not a mahram for her. He is the mahram, but not his father. So he married to daughter one. Produce children of here three and three daughters. Let's call them <coughs> triple D one, triple D two, triple D eight, three. Right. This daughter, she was married to the father of the father, grandfather of Muhammad. Okay, so grandfather of Muhammad. 
and also he produced following daughters. Let's call them different letters because I don't want to. So it's P1, P2, P3. <coughs> Here, this one, this daughter, is the grandfather of Muhammad from the mother's side. So he is the father of the mother of Muhammad. And he produced also, let's say, T1, T2, T3. This man now is sitting with DD1, DD2, plus those ones. Got three, six, nine, twelve. And his wife is 13. Right. Who are these related to Muhammad? Can anybody tell me? Come on, look at it properly. They're the daughters of his father. They are the daughters of his father. They are sisters. You understand that now? No, you don't. Yeah. Did you follow it? Yes, sir. So who are these then? Yes, they are the brothers of the father. So they sisters of the father. They are paternal aunties. So they are paternal aunties. And maternal aunties. Yes. And this one, woman. <laughs> huh? Because they are the sisters of his mother, the father of the mother. So the father of the mother, these are the daughters of the father of the mother, they are the sisters of his mother. So they are maternal. Auntie. Okay, auntie. Now, he's sitting with this. And who is his mother? She's the mother of what? All of them. So I'm sitting with my three sisters, my three paternal aunties, my three maternal aunties, my three daughters, and my wife is the mother of all. Oh, Got it? Yeah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So that's how we understand the perpetual prohibitions. Prohibition and what is you're allowed and you're not allowed to marry. Fine. <laughs> they wanted to see the board. That's fine. Oh, they want to see the board. No, I'll show them. I'll show them. They've okay. seen it now. They've seen the board. Yeah. Khalas, alhamdulillah. That's that's a, we don't, you don't want to see me. They don't want to see us. They could see us from there too. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Right, so we're going to go now to the... So this is now the third category of the perpetual ineligibility. We've done the, we've done the blood relations, we've done the marriage ties, and the third is the breastfeeding. Right, before we go to the breastfeeding, right? because I need to have this breastfeeding, inshallah, for next week. Um, I would like to make sure that you understand the difference among the scholars. If, for example, the person did not marry, he fornicated. So let's say the man had fornicated with a woman. Okay? Does the mother of that fornicated woman becomes a mahram to him? Do you understand me or not? Because if it's marriage, it's mahram. Now this is called fornication. It's consummation of a marriage, but without marriage. Okay? Difference among the scholars. The ones who prevent this, the Ahnaf and the Hanabila. Hanafi, Hanbali. But the one who does not make it prohibited, Shafi'i and Maliki. Even to the extent the Shafi'i, they said you are allowed to marry to the stepdaughter of a fornicated woman. So you fornicated with a woman and she had a daughter from somebody else. You're allowed because there is no proof to prohibit because it's not marriage. Do you understand me? But you come further than that as well. That is the, the daughter, which is the outcome of that zina fornication. So you are the biological what? Biological what? Father. Because it's not legitimate marriage relationship. He said it's allowed to marry her. But the correct opinion and the one that synchronizes with the fitrah is still haram. So we say, whether it's her daughter from different husband, or that's your daughter from the biological, uh, uh, biologically, but she's still for vacation, whether it's her mother, okay, the mother, or it's your son, you cannot marry her because you've made a fornication, 
So she is the wife of your father. She's not the wife, but she's for So the fornication also implicates that the hurma will take place. And that's the opinion which we adapt to. Alhamdulillah, it is we have. Right. Now we've got not that much minutes. We've got 13 minutes. Uh, al rada is a bit uh, a bit more. You know, we need to break the rada inshallah, as well. So we'll just say, if you have any questions, let's go ahead and ask the questions. If you don't have a question, I'll go ahead with the rada. Fadl. So let's say a, a man has a son. A man has a son. Listen, brother, we want to make fatwa to Zubair, inshallah. Uh, so your name is Zubair, yeah? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> cool. and then, then, uh, a man has got a son. Then a woman has a daughter. And the woman, a woman has a daughter. Which woman? Which woman, which woman now? Talking about, you don't confuse it. As in they're married. As in they're married. You see, you're confused now. The woman and the man. Because <laughs> you don't confuse yourself if you confuse her. Get it right in your head first. A man that has a son. Is married to a woman that has a daughter. Okay, but a man that has a son yeah. from different wife. He married a woman. A she has a daughter from yeah. a different father. Question is, can they make marry each other? Yes. Okay. Can they marry each other or not? Yeah. Yes or no? No. Nice. Let me just explain to you what it is because you don't understand. Maybe it's not. Okay. Right. They got. Muhammad and Aisha. Same question. Okay, so Muhammad, let's say he was married to somebody else. Okay, he was married to Fatima. Before he married to Aisha. And he had okay, a son. Ooh, right. He's got a son. Yes? Can this son marry to one of these boys? Is that right? So this one cannot marry because it's still our brothers and sisters from the yeah. father's side. Yeah. yeah. So what, what do you want to do now? I'm gonna I'm gonna say. So this one is not allowed to marry this one. Yeah. But is he allowed to marry? Yeah. Nah. No. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, yes. Yes. What's the relationship? Different mother. This man has got his father is Muhammad, and this is Fatima. This Aisha, her oh. daughters are from somebody else. Okay. From somebody else. Here, we said before. Oh, fine. Let's say it's Khalid. No. <laughs> different mother, different father. Yeah. Okay. So these daughters come from this, this relationship, and this son comes from this relationship. Of course, you can marry them. It's not, it's not difficult. So you could marry anyone uh, as the one you do. And not the father of Muhammad's uh, daughter. No, no, don't confuse me. You got your question now. Uh, only D1, D2, and D3. Then, so. so you can marry her. So what else? What else? And then they can't. He can't marry D, D1, D, 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 D1, and then all of them. Like, he can't marry. He can't marry. That's can't marry. You want to stop the He's saying he can't marry the triple. The, the ones at the bottom there. He, they they can marry D, D, oh, these ones. Yeah, he can't he can't marry. Marry. Why he can't marry these ones? Because they have auntie. Because there is aunt, because yeah. they are the, they are the, these are the sister, the daughter, the sisters of Muhammad. So the person of Muhammad is an auntie, can't marry the auntie. Because that is a sister of Because he's just his sister, the children of his. And he's a sister of his aunties, he can't marry his aunties. But this one is different, totally related, different relationship. You know, I, I, I have a person who he says to the person, You are my uncle, and the Lord is. You are my maternal uncle. The one says, "You are my maternal uncle." So they are talking to each other. He's a paternal uncle, and maternal uncle to each other. Subhanallah. It's because of this relationship that takes place. Okay. As long as you know it's halal and haram, alhamdulillah. Fine. I've got some questions here. If you want to, <laughs> right. So I'm allowed. The person, his husband, is he? Is he's allowed? Okay. To marry with the daughter. Of the wife of his father. Do you understand that? Okay. Let's say the wife of his father. So this is the wife of his father. Yes? Father of his says. So he's allowed to marry to the daughters. He said to the wife of his father. 
Also, it is allowed to marry the daughter of the wife of the son. <laughs> it's confusing. <laughs> wife of the son. You have a son. He's got a wife. Now that wife is not to you. But her daughter from different husbands, I'm allowed to marry her. Is that understood? Yes, everybody? You're not following? Tell me. I'll, I'll explain again. My son, okay, he's married to a wife. This is wife. She's got a daughter. Now, that daughter is mahram to the son who is the, the husband. But it's not mahram to the father of that son. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm exploring it just to make sure they understand. But also, a man. Question. He married two wives. Ah, I'll, I'll leave that. I'll leave that inshallah for next time because to do with the uh, suckling. Right. It's to do with suckling. Inshallah, I'll leave that. That's the question. A good one. Okay. And the question, Kwani? Any other questions? Fine. We'll go to the uh, online. Fabari. I can't hear you. Assalamu alaikum. If a divorced or widowed woman remarries, does the new husband become a mahram for the woman's married daughters? Well, this is what we just said now. Let's, let's say this is Aisha, we said that she's widowed or she's divorced, and her daughters, he becomes mahram to her, of course, because they are stepdaughters. Isn't you asking the same thing? Even even though they're married, it doesn't matter they're married or not married. Okay. Once you marry a woman, her daughters, regardless married or not married, they become mahram to you because you are their stepdaughters of yours. Jazakallah khaira. It doesn't matter if married or not married. Regardless of D one, D two, three, D three, they're married or not married. Still, they are mahram to Mr. Muhammad. Yes. Okay. Khair inshallah. Anything else? Anything else? Father, who is that? Shamim, Shamam. Father Shamam. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Uh, Hayakallah. My question was when a man divorces his wife and then takes her back, is there a certain amount of time that he has to wait before divorcing her again? Or can a, can a man basically divorce her, take her back, and do that three times in one sitting? You're asking something which is not to do with a class, it's to do with a divorce. But unless you. You are in a desperation for this question. I'll answer it. Otherwise, I will postpone it to the divorce section. Do you understand me? So I have to need to explain now what is the divorce and all of this. Then no, no, no. You 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 can delay, Shahana. I just wanted to ask because I'm covering your sharh that you did in the other masjid of Kitab al Talaq, and that's why I had a question right. from so that. But I come to the Kitab al Talaq. Uh, you're the smart boy now. <laughs> We come to the Kitab al Talaq and explain it a bit more. Yeah. So inshallah, we'll explain it. Yeah, we stopped somewhere there. Yeah. We will see, inshallah, what is the divorce three times within the idda? Can you divorce within the idda? Inshallah. But if you want a quick answer, I'll give it to you. Yes, you're you're allowed to come to her as soon as possible to divorce her today and to come tomorrow to her, and that will be counting as a divorce. And if you divorce her again, we counting a divorce within the idda. Now, that's a quick answer for you. Assalamu alaikum. Salam tawakat. Fadli Ahmed. Jazakallah khairan, Sheikhna. I want to ask you about something I've heard a couple of times now. Uh, from one of our teachers that the kafara for somebody who fornicates in Ramadan is the same as approaching your wife in the day of Ramadan. Is that true? The kafara of breaking the fast of Ramadan for no reason, just like this? No, Sheikh. Uh, the kaf the, what they've said is the kafara, if you fornicate with a woman in Ramadan, if is you the same. With a woman? Yeah. Is the so, same as if you approach your wife in Ramadan. Do we agree with this statement? Yeah, so that means he is approaching his wife in intercourse, and we know the kafara is the kafara is the ghalila, which is first he has to free a slave. If he can't, he has to fast two continuous months. If he can't, he has to feed 60 poor people. So if he fornicates instead of uh, consummating a marriage with his wife, and both of them, of course, they are in Ramadan. And both having the days are to be obligatory upon them because it could be travelers, no problem. But they're obligatory to fast that day and the intercourse. So that's the kafara. But if they, if he fornicates, is that the same? 
I mean, I don't have really at the moment anything to say about this, except that if we link it to what we talked about here, the that is the fornication with the women implement implicates as well that there will be perpetual, you know, uh, hurma prohibition for the woman, man to marry the mother of his fornicated woman. Okay, so it could be the same as well that the fornicator woman she will as well if you fornicate with her she will implicate the big kafar like into causing with a normal wife. But as I said, that's in the general answer. But Allahu A'lam, we don't have a proof, Yaqwani. In both cases, we don't have a proof to say that. We don't have a proof to say that. No. But definitely. Sheikh Al Karim, after, after, after he said that, one of the students asked the Sheikh, he asked him if uh, this person did this and he has to have the kafara, uh, like he said, he asked him, would they have to delay the. Uh, the punishment uh, to let him expiate. And he said, I don't have an answer for that. I don't understand delay the punishment. I don't understand what you're saying. Oh, so in order to stone him, the student asked him, would they have to first how, expiate? How it, could be, it could be a husband who is not married before. No, no, he, he specified that he was um, Muhsan, I think it's called. And that's beside the case. It doesn't change the case. It doesn't change the case whether it's going to be postponing the punishment or not. Doesn't you know postpone the case? It doesn't affect what we're gonna say. Is he gonna be implementing the kafara or not? That's the question. Allahu alam. This is a you know it could be, it, it, this is a where we say it's very controversial. We only have a proof for both cases. Allahu alam. Jazakallah khairan, Sheikh. Can you elaborate on the possible wisdom of the? Mother and the mother of the the mother of the husband or the daughter. I'm trying to. I'll tell you in English. Here. Okay, I'm getting your. Can you elaborate on the possible wisdom? Because I think the audience will follow this as well. Maybe not. Can you elaborate on the possible wisdom of the mother-in-law or the daughter-in-law being permanent mahram priest? What is the wisdom behind this? Do we know? The mother-in-law. The mother-in-law, that means the mother of your wife. That's what it is. Daughter-in-law, she is the wife of your son. Simple. <laughs> so what is the wisdom? Well, you know, the, this is the blood relationship. Uh, can, uh, the blood relationship is actually being uh, uh, based upon what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. This is like blood to the blood. And when we get married, also the blood through the semen as well get mixed and made it perpetual mahram because uh, wallahu a'lam it is going to be like bringing conflict between um, the, the relatives say for example that the father is allowed to marry the wife of his son if he divorces her then later on she will tell him the secrets of his son and that will break the relationship completely will demolish it and not only that, and he will say, who satisfies you more? Me or my son? See, who satisfies you more? And that is as well the thing. So the father, he's going to be knowing the secrets which are on the bed that his son has been doing. And that is not really even digestible. It's not, you know, it's not, it's not as, you know, it's not even thinkable. You're thinking about, I'm going to know what my son was doing with this woman whom she was his wife one day. Same thing with, as well, the mother of your wife. The mother of your wife, once you start, if you, if you divorce, so you could marry the mother of your wife, then you might break relationship between the mother and her daughter. So always Islam comes in to preserve this relationship. I'll give you an example. I'm not allowed to marry the two sisters together. But if I divorce one, I'm allowed to marry what? The sister. Why am I allowed to marry both of them together? Because I'm going to break what? The relationship. Do you understand me? No problem. If I marry something which will not. Also, I cannot allow to marry a woman and her aunt. Why? Because it will break the relationship between the auntie and her niece. Okay? She's not allowed. But if it is to do with uh, a co-wife, no problem. Because the co-wife is 
there's no relationship anyway, it's sweet between them. So it's a co if it's a daughter of a co-wife, no problem to get the marriage. And we're going to speak about it in the next week. Right. So, Wallahu A'lam, that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever he had ordained upon us, has to have a hikmah. Whether we know it or not, we submit, the akhwan. Well, I could just say that maybe breaking the relationship is one of the reasons. And I don't think even the normal, uh, sorry, the other, the other religions allow such a thing. And they call it uh, incest. Well, they call it incest. That's the word for it. Incest, that means you're marrying from your maharib, the ones you are prohibited perpetually to marry. Incest. And that, as I said, you find it in Christianity, you find it in Judaism. But Islam is more detailed. Now, I don't know about Buddhism and all of those religions which are not from the uh, from the, the Lord Subhanahu Wa Taala. So the three religions there are the three, you know, they are prophet from uh, the divine. Yes, we know that Christianity, Judaism, being manipulated, but still they have words of Allah Azza wa Jal in there. As for the Buddhism, Hinduism, Sikhism, and all of those, they are not really tracing themselves to the same as the Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Wallahu alam. Now, fine. Have the questions? Fadal Ahmed Khalas, Ahmed. Now, the non-perpetual, the non-perpetual women that you cannot marry. The non-perpetual that you cannot marry at that time are they your husband? The 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 one which is not perpetual. Yes. The one which is not perpetual. Are you allowed to? Are you a dear mahram? You're not. You're not dear mahram, of course. No. I am not allowed to marry your wife, nor are you allowed to marry my wife. But does Adam make, become a mahram to your wife? Nor do you become a mahram to my wife? Do you understand me? Any wife of any other person is a mahram. Is a you know temporarily haram upon. Do you understand that? I cannot marry anybody's wife. Nobody can marry my wife unless we divorce. But during that temporarily perpetual prohibition, you can't just say I'm a mahram to her. <laughs> Because you're not a mahram. No. You're a mah Here, you're not allowed to marry, but you're not a mahram. Mahram means perpetually prohibited. Wallahu alam. And I think, subhanakallah, bihamdik, ashhad al-la ilan tasafi wa kumana khair, barakallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm late now.